we want to now bring in our Jody experts, legal analyst and defense attorney, Jamie Floyd, an adult and child psychiatrist, Dr. Joshua Weiner. And Jamie, I want to start with you. We were mentioning, mentioning some of the mitigating factors that the defense may employ to try to save Jody's life. Uh, some of those could be mental status, lack of criminal history, difficult childhood or family, family ties, um, lack of intent, good character, remorse or grief, education or intellect, uh, stress. What are some of these that you think would be most compelling in this particular case? If you were leading the defense, what would you be emphasizing here? You just made a pretty good case there, but you have to get to that point. Prosecutors have to first demonstrate that the crime was unduly cruel, which means heinous, torturous, depraved. And then once they make that case, the defense has the opportunity to establish those mitigators. And sometimes we do see some surprises at that phase of the case. Uh, evidence of some injury suffered by the defendant in childhood, evidence of child abuse or molestation that we might not have heard about. There's no factual evidence of that here as of yet, but I'd certainly be digging around to find it or talking with Jody about it. Uh, there also is generally an opportunity to demonstrate some sort of remorse, not the kind of thing Jody demonstrated yesterday in her interview. And I would have been terribly upset to have seen her give that interview yesterday. And it sounds as though her lawyers were at least surprised. I I agree with that, Jamie. I don't know how the board, the, bar, the Department of Corrections allowed her to do an interview. But Dr. Weiner, let's turn to you. Uh, gender, of course, is not listed as one of the mitigating factors. But I wonder if it actually is. Uh, we looked in the state of Arizona. There's 122 men on death row in Arizona and only three women at this point. Arizona hasn't executed a woman since 1930. Do you think just nationwide that it's a little bit harder for juries to put a woman to death? Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Women actually represent only 2% of the people who are on death row. So women commit about 10% of homicides in this country, but yet they only represent 2% of the people on death row. And I think that has to do with our culture. I think that in America, we really do have this feeling like you need to take care of women. What do you do if there's a burning building? You run in and you save the women and children first. What do men feel? They feel like they really can't be harmful or uh, do anything dangerous or harmful or damaging to a woman. So I definitely think that that absolutely is what in jo is in Jody Arias' uh, favor. And, and Dr. Weiner, um, maybe it's just me, but it, it strikes me that a woman who believes that she is innocent or who believes that she acted in self-defense would be saying uh, that she's going to fight these charges and appeal these right. charges as long as it takes until the day she dies. Instead, as we, as we heard, she came out to say she's ready to die. She's ready for death. Is that a window into her mental state or her conscience, perhaps? I'm not sure about that. I think, you know, this might just be another play for Jody. I think that maybe she's trying to use a little hmm. reverse psychology here, trying to tell people, or particularly trying to speak to the jury and saying, please sentence me to death. And the jury might be saying, you know what, we want to punish her in the most hurtful way. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give her exactly what she says she doesn't want. And so hmm. we're going to sentence her to life. Now, this all might be a big game for Jody, so we're not sure. She's obviously proven herself to be not a very trust trustworthy person. And so who really knows when it comes to her? Well, yeah. one indicator that it might be a game is for anyone familiar with the criminal justice system, of course, there's no speedy route uh, to the actual execution. In Arizona, the average length of time between sentencing and execution is 12 years. Nationwide is 15 years. So, Jamie, of course, some of that reflects the fact that people go and appeal these things as much as possible, which can be dilatory. But in your view, is there anything here that would overlap with the legal strategy? Is she going to waive her rights to appeal because she would potentially want that execution to come sooner? She certainly could and there have been cases where defendants have and they've expedited the process to execution uh, but the death penalty has not been imposed as rapidly in the country in the last 10 years last 15 years
years. And in Arizona, as we've been discussing, it has not been imposed on a woman, I think, in about 80 years. I think the last right. time it was imposed That's right. was in 1930. Uh, I think the fact that she's a woman is definitely going to play into the result here. But let's keep in mind that Arizona does have three women on death row. So if a state is going to impose the death penalty on a woman, Arizona may be that state. But Jamie, uh, when we look at the aggravating factors that the jury is going to consider, we're talking about is the crime heinous, cruel, yeah. depraved? Is it committed in a cold and calculating manner? And when you talk about somebody who clearly had premeditation and tried to cover up her crime in so many ways, trying to make it seem like I didn't go to Arizona, you know, she took the gun and then drove to Arizona. When you have so much evidence around premeditation, does it make it really hard to save her from uh, death? Well, this gets back to the original question. Can you try and demonstrate factors in mitigation that explain why she lies as much as she did? I, I, I hate to refer back to that other uh, parallel case, if you will, of Casey Anthony. But there were explanations that the defense came up with for the reasons why this person is such a liar. Is there something in her character? Character that went terribly wrong in her childhood that the defense can bring to bear. It's very important, though, that the, the defense not retry the case they've already tried before the jury. Then you lose credibility with the jury in the penalty phase. You have to bring new evidence forward, new witnesses forward. Her family may testify. In fact, she can testify in mitigation, but it has to be new evidence about her character and about her state of mind in mitigation, not about the underlying facts in the case. Well, and Dr. Weiner, to that point, help us understand some of the potential psychology of the jurors here. You know, if they wanted to save her, they could have found her guilty of second degree murder yesterday. Do you think in a sense they've already made up their minds about what her fate will be? Well, I don't know if we could say that the jury in total has made up their minds. I think that there are two parts to this, right? So you have the first part of the trial where they're trying to find, define whether she committed first degree murder. And I think that what the legal system here does is tries to look mostly at facts. You try to remove emotions from that and you're trying to be very objective. So I think they made their decision regarding that. Now it seems to me that the second part and potentially third part of this trial is going to really involve emotion. And so I think there is where they're could be a wrinkle in this. You know, about a quarter to a third of people really believe that the death penalty is morally wrong. And so I think that that is something that is going to be very hard for some people to change. There is this concept, though, called groupthink, where sometimes one individual person may feel like they would act one particular way when they're acting individually. But when they're a member of a group, they're swayed. They're, they have maybe a very right. charismatic leader in the group, and that person is then willing to change their mind and decide to do something that they wouldn't normally do. So I think that all these are factors that are going to be played into this, and I think really what's critical here is that for Jody to really probably have the best chance of not getting the death penalty, she's going to have to engender some empathy in these jurors. She's going to need to say something, or there's going to need to be something in her life story that connects her in some way to the members of the jury. It's much harder to sentence somebody to death if you feel like you have some even small connection to them and you can relate to them in some way. And the doctor's underscoring something that's critical to understand. that The death penalty to be imposed, it has to be unanimous by this jury. Every juror has to agree to execute Jody Arias. If they can't agree, if there's not unanimity, then it goes to the judge to determine which of the remaining sentences to impose. Life in sent... Well, they can then determine, the, ju the jury can then decide uh, whether it's going to be life uh, without parole or they can kick it over to the judge. Mm -hmm. All right, Jamie Floyd and Dr. Josh Weiner, thanks so much for those insights.